Hey guys, it's Dr. James DeNicola Antonio, author of The Salt Fix. I'm here to talk to you about two important topics. One is salt and ketogenic diets, and also salt and exercise. The reason why I wanted to do this video, um, this Adapt for Life video, is because I suffered from uh, keto flu. And I actually suffered from dizziness and fatigue and exercise intolerance throughout uh, my low carb ketogenic diet journey. So I think a lot of the experiences that I learned and researched through my book is going to help a lot of people out. So what happens when we cut our carb intake? So most people in the general you know, American diet, when they're consuming that standard American diet, consuming about 200 to 400 grams of carbohydrates. And so when you drop your carbohydrate intake to, let's say, less than 70 grams per day, a few things happen. What ends up happening is insulin levels go down. Your glucagon levels go up to increase glucose levels. And you also get an increased production of ketone bodies. So your body is converting exogenous fat into ketone bodies. All three of those things, when they occur, actually cause salt loss. So insulin helps the kidneys retain salt. And so when we cut our carb intake, insulin levels go down and we obviously lose more salt out the kidneys. Glucagon goes up to maintain glucose levels as our exogenous carbohydrate intake goes down. And glucagon also has a natural erratic effect. And also, uh, the ketone bodies are negatively charged. So they pull positively charged sodium ions with them, at least for the first week. What ends up happening is the body then starts creating ammonium, which is NH4+. And that positively charged molecule is drawn with the ketone body, the negatively charged ketone bodies. So for most people, when they initiate a ketogenic diet, for about two weeks, two to three weeks, they lose fair amounts of salt. And then the kidneys can shut off the salt loss. So what ends up happening, I, I get this question a lot is, well, how much salt do I lose during those first few weeks? And why am I still dizzy during you know, my ketogenic journey? So to answer the first question, most people are going to lose about a full teaspoon of salt extra every single day for the first week while they're on a ketogenic diet. Then the second week, every single day, they're going to lose about a half a teaspoon of additional salt. Now, some people who are starting out and have pretty bad insulin resistance or have been overweight for a while, their kidneys have become so dependent on insulin to reabsorb salt that when they cut their carbohydrate intake and um, the insulin levels go down, their kidneys just continue to spill salt for weeks. So this is actually a big issue for a lot of people. And it's something that I definitely had issues with because, I mean, I consumed a high-carb diet most of my life. And so my kidneys were just used to those elevated, chronically elevated levels of insulin to retain salt. So you cut the carbs, insulin drops, and your kidneys just continue to spill salt. Now, for those insulin resistant people, it's hard to say when exactly your kidneys are going to shut off the salt loss. It just depends. You got to go with basically how you're feeling. And so there's another aspect though to this. So if you look at any um, ketogenic Facebook group, there are so many people suffering from this Atkins flu. They have no idea why, like why they're feeling this way. They're in desperate need of help. And even people who have been chronically on a low-carb diet are suffering from fatigue, um, exercise intolerance. They don't know exactly what's going on. And so there's also an additional uh, aspect of when you cut your carbohydrate intake, you also don't absorb salt as well. So glucose actually helps sodium absorption in the intestine. So this is another reason why chronically, if you're on a low carb ketogenic diet, you can feel symptoms of salt deficiency because you literally just don't absorb it as well because you're not eating as much exogenous glucose. There's a third aspect though that I think also was really affecting um, my salt levels while I was on a ketogenic diet. I already had much lower insulin levels. So what ends up saving us in a way is basically that elevated insulin level helps us reabsorb more salt. The issue is, is that most of us are consuming some type of caffeine throughout the day. So I consume three cups of coffee in the morning, two cups in the evening, usually. Um, 
And so caffeine is a huge salt waster. We lose a ton of salt in the urine when we drink coffee or tea or energy drinks or any type of caffeine source, we're losing a lot of salt. Never realized that before. And so that was probably contributing a lot to my dizziness, exercise intolerance, increased heart rate, things like that. And I wasn't adding the salt back that I was losing. So you can lose anywhere from about a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of salt by consuming four cups of coffee. So big salt waster. And some people like to use just a pinch of mineral salt in their coffee. That's what I like to do. I actually enjoy about an eighth of a teaspoon in three cups of coffee. That's about as much as I can tolerate, but it actually does taste pretty good for me. So it just depends on how I want to do it for that day. So a lot of people suffering out there with the ketogenic flu, um, a lot of your symptoms are probably due to salt deficiency, and that's contributed by the low exogenous intake of carbohydrate, the lower insulin levels, higher glucagon, um, and the caffeine consumption as well. You don't have elevated insulin levels now to kind of offset the salt wasting effects of caffeine. So that is why someone can chronically feel the symptoms of salt deficiency while on a ketogenic diet if they're doing things um, like consuming caffeine. And then also I wanted to talk about exercise. So we also lose a ton of salt in our sweat when we exercise. And what's interesting is, is when hormones control um, basically what we do in a way. So what I mean by that is when we cut our carbohydrate intake and we lower our insulin levels and we fix our leptin resistance, our body actually has access to its stored energy. So our body actually feels like it's no longer in starvation mode. So your body actually is okay with, and you're going to get signals to exercise because you can actually grab your stored fat for energy. So most people that go on a ketogenic diet also on top of that salt depletion effect of being on a ketogenic diet, they also start working out more because their hormones are determining their behavior. So insulin goes down, leptin resistance is fixed. You want to go and work out now because you have access to your stored energy. You're not in starvation mode anymore. The problem is, is when we work out, we lose a ton of salt in our sweat. So in the book, I, I have a table of basically how much salt we lose for every hour of exercise, depending on how hot it is. But for this video, I'm just going to kind of simplify it and basically say that we lose about a half a teaspoon of salt every hour of exercise. It'll be higher at higher temperatures outside and certainly depends on the person and how active you are um, and how you know vigorously you're exercising. But about a half a teaspoon of salt per hour of exercise is lost. And so, and we know that some people are obviously going to lose more than others and it's an art and it's also a science, but I try to break down the science really well in the book. Um, and so people have always asked me, well, how does someone actually dose themselves with salt prior to exercise? So, so I obviously can't give specific health advice, but I can hypothetically tell you, um, how could someone dose themselves with salt? So you can, one way to do it is basically using lime juice, lemon juice, about a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt and you take it like a shot wash it down with water or you can kind of create something like a lemon lime Gatorade without the glucose in it so it's kind of like keto aid right it doesn't have the glucose in it but it's a lemon um, lime juice and then you uh, you know use about a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon of salt and then you fill uh, the quarter teaspoon of salt and the lemon lime juice up with eight ounces of water and there's your keto aid. Or you can do a half a teaspoon of salt with 16 ounces of water with lemon and lime. So there's your lemon lime keto aid. And so what I like to do though, is I actually like the taste of garlic salt. I can just take it straight up and wash it down with about eight ounces of, uh, of water. And so that is how I dose myself with salt before I exercise. And I will tell you, it was last year, I hadn't worked out for a while uh, and I wanted to go back to the gym. So it was my first day back and the lady at the gym I, I was like, you know, just go and work out. You can sign up after your workout. And I was like, okay. So I hit the weights and I did a mile run. And as soon as I finished my, my, my mile run, I just literally collapsed to the ground 
couldn't move for three minutes. I, I nearly passed out. I did not dose myself with salt that day. The next day, I dosed myself with salt. I lifted weights much harder. I ran twice as hard, twice as long, and it felt completely fine. And so, so many people out there are suffering from overtraining syndrome and uh, feelings of faintness, syncope, an elevated heart rate, their muscle fatigue, muscle cramps, muscle spasms. They just generally feel fatigued, and it's mainly due to salt deficiency. And overtraining syndrome is actually been shown to be due to salt depletion of the tissues. And so you can actually fix overtraining syndrome where people get joint pains and fatigue by just upping your salt intake. It makes complete sense. We also lose a lot of iodine and sweat as well. And so only certain salts have a good amount of iodine. And in, in the book, I actually go over some of my number one recommended uh, salts. And I have a nutrient analysis table that kind of breaks down some of the other minerals that are in some of the more common, commonly consumed salts. So check out the book. Um, it's called The Salt Fix. It has over 500 references and really covers a lot of uh, what we've just discussed, but a lot more. And I think it's well worth the read. Um, I hope this information uh, was useful. And uh, please, uh, if you want to learn more, you can check out, uh, check out my website. It's thesaltfix.com. Um, and you can follow me on Facebook, um, I'm on Instagram, and you can follow me on Twitter at Dr. James Dinick, D-I-N-I-C. Until, until our next video, stay salty.